Savian, how could you know? It was the time for you to come to me. Savion, do you remember the days we squandered pleasantly? How well then have you carried what have taught in my heart and memory? There's no beat to that, but that was the lay of Sir Davian Trawler. All right, now look, I do actually have a point in making this video. I want to discuss the prologue to the Doors of Stone and what it could mean. Uh, please, before I jump into any of that, if you enjoy these King Killer videos, do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. So like goal's gonna be 96, because that's the chapter in the Wise Man's Fear where Kvothe finally gets laid by Valurian, none other than a fairy princess. Alright, so just jumping right into it, the actual prologue for the Doors of Stone was released by Patrick Rolfus on his YouTube channel, or his Twitch channel rather. The, the, the clip is uploaded to his YouTube channel, The Aeolian. Now, if you uh, haven't exactly seen the video, I've linked it down below in the description. I'm not going to play it in this video because I don't know if that's, it, it, there's no point, I'm going to read the transcription, but go and watch that video because his prose and the way that he reads his own story is fucking perfect. Everything about this dude is artistic as shit, but uh, thanks and shout out to winterscoming.net for getting this transcription down of the prologue uh, to the Doors of Stone. Notice it's a silence of three parts. Now, the, the, all of the King Killer Chronicles start with something very similar, right? So we, uh, we learn that the frame story... Um, the main story that's taking place with Coat telling his story to Chronicler and Bast in the bar, the Waystone Inn, right? They have people coming in. The actual story itself, um, like the frame story is usually set up with the prologue being like describing three different types of silence in the Waystone Inn. And the third one is always Kvothe's silence because it's big enough to wrap the other ones in it, right? So that's how this one starts out. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and read this, then we'll talk about some uh, ideas. I'll speculate a bit, and then let's discuss the tangerine. It was the still, it was still night in the middle of Noir. The Waystone Inn lay in silence, and it was a silence of three parts. The most obvious part was a vast echoing quiet made by things that were lacking. If the horizon had shown the slightest kiss of blue, the town would be stirring. There would be the crackle of kindling, the gentle murmur of water simmering for porridge or tea. The slow, dewy hush of folk walking through the grass would have brushed the silence off the front steps of the house with the indifferent brickness of an old birch broom. If Noir had been large enough to warrant watchmen, they would have trudged and grumbled the silence away like an unwelcome stranger. If there had been music, but no, of course, there was no music. In fact, there were none of these things, and so the silence remained. In the basement of the Waystone Inn, there was the smell of coal smoke and seared iron. Everywhere was the evidence of hurried work, tools scattered, bottles left in disarray. A spill of acid hissed quietly to itself, having slopped over the edge of a wide stone bowl. Nearby, the bricks of a tiny forge made small, sweeping, sweet pinging noises as they cooled. These tiny, forgotten noises added a furtive silence to a large, echoing one. They bound it together like tiny stitches of bright, brass thread, the low drumming counterpoint, a timber beat behind a song. The third silence was not an easy thing to notice. If you listened long enough, you might begin to feel it in the chill copper of the way stones locked turned tight to keep the night at bay. It lurked in the thick timbers of the door and nestled deep in the building's gray foundation stones. And it was in the hands of a man who had designed the inn as he slowly undressed himself beside a bare and narrow bed. The man had true red hair, red as flame. His eyes were dark and weary, and he moved with the slow care of a man who was badly hurt or tired or old beyond his years. The waystone was his, just as the third silence was his. This was appropriate, as it was the greatest silence of the three, holding the others inside itself. It was deep and wide as autumn's ending. It was heavy as a great river smooth stone. It was the patient cut flower sound of a man who was waiting to die. All right, now jumping right into that. Like, there, there I could dissect it and make like a like a 20 or 30 minute video 
doing that on all of it of itself. But I just want to focus on three different things that I picked up on from having read reading this prologue a few different times now. The first thing to notice is that like the exciting part when we go to the basement of the Waste Stone Inn, how tools are scattered everywhere, how there's a bowl of acid that's spilled on the floor, and how basically there's evidence of hurried work everywhere. Now, that's insane. Because if you've read this story, if you know Quoth like I do, Quoth is meticulous. He doesn't hurry his work. He's very precise. As a matter of fact, we see effects of Quoth, or Quoth in Quoth at the bar with how meticulous he is with cleaning and his rituals in the end. What is going on in the third day of the Waystone Inn, in the, in, the, in the final installment of this story, that's causing Quoth to hurry up? If I'm not mistaken, in the first two books... We haven't actually seen what's down in the basement. We just hear that Quoth goes down there, Bath go, Bass goes down there, but Chronicler's never been down there. We don't know what's down there. It's clearly a forge. Quoth is planning something. A lot of people, myself included, think that the entirety of the Waystone Inn is a giant trap. Now let's mention the second thing that I noticed. The foundation of the Waystone Inn is made of greystones. Greystones, or waystones are kind of like portals to the Fey in this world. Literally, this book is called The Doors of Stone, and in The Wise Man's Fear, Quoth goes into the Fey realm through a doorway of Waystone. So, obviously, we've got the massive door of stone in the university. It's got copper plates all over it, so there could be uh, Lax, the greatest shaper ever, is back there, the guy who stole the moon. Um... <clears throat> We're going to find out what's behind the uh, Door of Stone, but I think <clears throat> the actual Waystone Inn is a giant trap. And the reason why Coat is not as a perfectionist as Quoth is because literally he's someone else right now. Someone stole Quoth from him, right? They took a few letters from his name. They stole a piece of his name, and that's why he acts this way. So, yes, he kind of is putting on a front where he doesn't... He isn't as good as, as sympathy. Uh, he, he can't fight as well as he did in the story, learning with the Aiden mercenaries, right? That's kind of an act, but it's also not really. That part of him was taken from him, and that could be what's locked in the thrice-locked box um, in, in his room, right? Remember at the end of Wise Man's Fear, he asked Bass to try to open it, and he has Bass try multiple different ways, but Bass is unable to open it. So if that's the case, when uh, Quoth takes his key to try to turn the lock and it doesn't open, there's got to be something that uh, is controlling that chest. In my opinion, this is what I was talking about with the Chandrian. I believe that... Quoth, we will eventually find out that Quoth does kill Cinder. Cinder then in turn steals a piece of his name and locks it in that box. Quoth is then able to steal that box, but is unable to open it. So maybe he's designed the Waystone Inn as this giant trap to lead the Chandrian to him so that he can uh, kill the one necessary to open the box to get his name back. We have heard Patrick Rolfus say that there's going to be more stories of Quoth after the Doors of Stone, so I think this is what's going to happen. You all let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And remember, the like goal for this video is going to be 96. Because that's the chapter in The Wise Man's Fear where Quoth finally gets some pussy.